Good evening and welcome to our Christmas Eve service. I'm Reverend Jim Menser, the pastor here at North Salem United Methodist Church. It's my privilege to welcome you to our home this evening for this very special time of worship. There are two things I would invite you to have in hand as we begin our service tonight. The first can be found at the church's website, and that is a copy of the bulletin for this evening. I'd also ask that you might consider getting a candle and a match so that you can light that candle later in our service. And now let us begin. Don't you join me in prayer. God of us all, take us to that night long ago. In our imaginations, let us marvel at the holy child, worship on bended knee, and sing with the angels. Let us behold the tender care of Mary and the watchful eye of Joseph. Let us be blessed by the gaze of the Christ child. Loving God, when we leave this place, may we leave like the shepherds, singing and praising God. For Christ is born again this night, born to set us free, born to give us hope, born to change the world. Let it happen again. But first, let us pray for the world that God so loves, for those who have not yet heard the good news of God or who do not believe in it, for those who walk in darkness and in the shadow of death, and for the church in this place and everywhere, that it may be freed from evil and fear and may in pure joy lift up the light of the love of Christ. These prayers and praises we humbly offer to you, O God, in the words that Christ himself taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. During the four weeks of Advent, part of our worship tradition has been an Advent wreath, such as you see here. And this evening, we complete our Advent journey of anticipation and remembrance by lighting the Christ candle. Having lit on the first weekend the candle of hope, the second week the candle of peace, the third week, the candle of love, and then this past Sunday, the candle of joy. And this evening, we remember the redeeming life and light of incarnation, the gift of Emmanuel, as we light each of these candles, culminating with the Christ candle. Let us remember the hope, peace, joy, and love that is ours because God is with us. In the ninth chapter of Isaiah we read, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch black land, light has dawned. We are also a people who walk in darkness. There seems little need to explain, but the prophecy of Isaiah is that into this darkness a great light will shine. And of course, the proclamation of the gospel, 
especially the wild and joy-filled proclamation of Christmas, is that into this darkness there is already shown a light to dazzle the world. When this baby was born, the whole course of history was changed. This is a fact as hard and blunt as any fact. Art, music, literature, our culture itself, our political institutions, our whole understanding of ourselves and of the world. It's impossible to conceive of how differently world history would have developed if this child had not been born. And in terms of faith, much more must be said, because for faith, the birth of a child into the darkness of the world made possible not just a new way of understanding life, but a new way of living life. All the way down the 20th century since that baby was born, there have been countless different kinds of people who in countless different kinds of ways have been filled with his Holy Spirit, who have been grasped by him, caught up in his life, who have found themselves deep in private ways, healed and transformed by their relationships with him. So much so that they simply have no choice but to go on proclaiming what the writers of the Gospels first proclaimed, that he is indeed the long-expected one, the Christ, the wonderful Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That in this child, in the man he grew up to be, there is a power of God to bring light to the darkness, to make us whole, to give a new kind of life to anybody who turns towards him in faith, even to such as you and me. May the light of Christ illuminate your path this Christmas Eve, my friends. Our scripture lessons this evening tell again the wonderful story of the birth of this baby called Jesus Christ. Our first reading tonight is from the Gospel of Matthew, the first chapter, verse 18, through the second chapter, verse 12. Here we're listening to Matthew making an argument, upholding the prophecies of the Old Testament prophets. His job is to tell this story in a way that will convince every Jew who hears it that this baby born is indeed the long-awaited Messiah. We are grateful to have Tom Kinney tonight with us to be our first reader. Joseph accepts Jesus as his son. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not con consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he and he gave him the name Jesus. The Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, 
Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people of chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked him where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped and over the place where the child was. Stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother. And they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Here ends the first reading. Thanks be to God. For those of you who are our younger Members, or for those of you who are young at heart tonight, we have a treat. For our children's moment, we want to share with you a video that is shared with us by our friends at St. James United Methodist Church. Santa Claus is paying a visit to baby Jesus. Let's listen in and hear what Santa has to say. Once upon a time, not very long ago, two women shoppers were talking, obviously very concerned. Buying Christmas gifts for family and friends is great, and I'm glad to do it, but um, I'm afraid Santa Claus is taking over, don't you think? Mm -hmm. He's causing many, many people to forget the real meaning of Christmas. I agree. After all, it is Jesus' birthday. Right, exactly. Now, Santa oversees a lot when he is out making his lists of who's been naughty and who's been nice. And much of what he hears goes in one ear and out the other. But this Christmas, he couldn't stop thinking about what the women had said. Could they possibly be right? As he went from house to house delivering toys, Santa couldn't stop worrying. Some people do forget Jesus on Christmas. Could it be his fault? Santa's last stop, as usual, was at a church that had a life-size nativity scene. Every year, Santa loved to be the first person to wish Jesus happy birthday, and he always brought a special present for the Christ child. But this year, Santa's footsteps were slow and heavy. He opened the door at the back of the church and crept into the very last pew. He hid his present under the pew. A tear rolled down his cheek. Even though children had left him cookies and milk and many loving letters, he still couldn't remember when he had felt so sad. Was it his fault that people were forgetting Jesus at Christmas time? Santa sat back and closed his eyes, when suddenly he heard a voice calling. Santa, Saint Nicholas, remember all the ways you helped my people when you were a bishop? The voice continued. And remember how many times you helped children who were poor or in danger. Santa pulled thoughtfully on his beard and smiled as he remembered. 
And then God said, Every year you help millions of people, young and old, show how much they love one another. Because of you, people everywhere fill their hearts with joy and love on Jesus' special day. Thank you, God. Santa felt much better. Santa jumped up. Next year, he would work even harder, filling hearts with love and joy, so they would be ready to honor Jesus on Christmas morning. He could hardly wait, and he knew he would have to hurry if he wanted to be the first person to wish Jesus happy birthday. He almost ran up the aisle, took off his hat, and knelt before the infant Jesus. He carefully placed his beautifully wrapped package next to the manger. It was the same present he had given Jesus every year, but now he knew for sure it was the one present Jesus wanted most of all. Inside the box were Santa's lists of the kind and loving things people, young and old, had done for one another during the year. Happy birthday, Jesus. He smiled lovingly at the figure of the tiny infant. Now no one who comes to church on Christmas and sees Santa kneeling there thinks it's strange at all. They can see that it is the perfect place for Santa Claus to be on Christmas. Our second scripture reading tonight comes from the Gospel of Luke. It's a different story than we heard a moment ago from Matthew. But Luke's role, Luke's purpose here is a different one indeed. Luke is not writing to the Jewish community. Luke is writing to the Gentiles, to those of Greek birth or Greek training. And so his goal is a different one indeed. His one is to show a person of faith that this baby born in Bethlehem, is indeed worthy of listening to, of following, of bringing into one's heart. We are thankful for Joanne McGuire, who is our second scripture reading this evening. This is from the book of Luke. It is chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from the from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration to take place while Canarius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town um, of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem. Because he was descended from the house and family of David, he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, her time for her to deliver the child, she had given birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the field, <clears throat> keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. He was born this day in the, day, in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, for on earth peace among all those he favors. And when the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. 
but Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Here ends the second reading. Thanks be to God. What would Christmas Eve be without Christmas carols? We are so thankful for Ellen Bosch, who has played some Christmas music for our, to open our service. And now we want to share with you a wonderful music video that was made possible by the work of the General Board of Discipleship of the United Methodist Church. This is literally a worldwide virtual choir. People from all around the world who are joining their voices together in a Christmas medley of carols. We hope you'll enjoy it.
Back in 1994, two American professors, both of whom were Christian, were invited by the Russian government and their Department of Education to teach a course in business morals and ethics to corporate leaders and governmental officials in Moscow. Of all their experiences during the trip, a simple village to a Russian or orphanage proved to be the most compelling. There were about a hundred boys and girls in the orphanage that day, children who had been abandoned, abused, and left in the care of this government-run program. Well, the Advent season had just begun, so during their visit, the two professors shared the traditional story of Christmas from the Gospel of Luke with the orphanage children. For many of these young ones, it was the first time they had ever heard the story. The two men told the children about Mary and Joseph arriving in Bethlehem, about finding no room in the inn for them to have privacy. And so the couple went to a stable where the baby Jesus was born and placed in a manger in a feeding trough. Well, throughout the story, the children and orphanage staff sat in amazement as they listened. Some sat literally on the edge of their stools, trying to grasp every word. After the story was over, the two professors gave each child three small pieces of cardboard so they could make their own crude manger. They were then given a little paper square cut from yellow napkins to tear into strips and carefully lay in the manger for straw. Small squares of flannel cut from a worn-out nightgown were then used for the baby's blanket. And a doll-like baby was cut from tan felt that the professors had brought with them from the United States. While the orphans were busy assembling their mangers, the two men walked around the room to see if any child needed help. All was going very well until they reached the table where little Mishka sat. He looked to be about nine years old, and he had already finished his project. As the professors looked at the little boy's manger, they couldn't help but notice that there was not one, but two babies in the manger. Calling for the translator, they asked the boy why there were two babies in the manger. For crossing his arms in front of him and looking at his completed manger scene, Mishka began to repeat the story with a very serious tone. For such a young boy who had heard the Christmas story only once, he related the happenings very accurately. That is, until he came to the part where Mary put the baby Jesus in the manger. Then Mishka began to ad-lib, making up his own ending to the story as he said, and when Mary lay the baby in the manger, Jesus looked at me and asked me if I had a place to stay. I told him I had no mama and I had no papa, so I don't have a place to stay. Then Jesus told me I could stay with him. But I told him I couldn't because I didn't have a gift to give him like everyone else. But I wanted to stay with Jesus so much so I thought about what I had that maybe I could use for a gift. And I thought, maybe if I kept baby Jesus warm, that would be a good gift. So I asked baby Jesus, if I kept you warm, would that be a good enough gift? And Jesus told me, if you keep me warm, that will be the best gift anybody ever gave me. So I got into the manger, and then baby Jesus looked at me, and he told me I could stay with him for always. Well, as little Mishka finished his story, his eyes were filled with tears. And for in that moment, the little orphan boy had finally found someone who would never abandon him, who would never abuse him, someone who would stay with him forever. We call Jesus by the name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And as this Christmas Eve continues to unfold, I hope that you discover, just as Mishka did, that the God who came to earth in Jesus Christ 
will never abandon or abuse us, but will stay with us forever. Jesus promises to be with us when the COVID-19 test comes back positive instead of negative, when the final exam is marked with an F instead of an A, when the spouse of 15 years stomps out of the door and does not return, and when the late-night call communicates news about a death, not a birth. In all these depressing and discouraging situations, Jesus is with us as Emmanuel. We are never completely without companionship or support, not as long as there's room for two babies in the manger. So why is it then that we seem to do such a poor job of keeping baby Jesus warm? Is it that we're threatened Uh, What is it that threatens to separate us from the Christ child these days? Part of the problem may be our blindness, that we simply don't see the manger. In our frantic search for comfort and joy, we look for lasting pleasures in all the wrong places. Clubs and classes, parties and programs, internet chat rooms and professional conferences. Now, don't get me wrong, good things can be found in all those gathering places. But they will always distract us from finding the one place where we can find unconditional acceptance and unending peace with baby Jesus in the manger. So maybe the problem is we're too busy that we just don't have time enough for the manger. During the weeks that lead up to Christmas, Our days are driven by endless Christmas parties, school concerts, family gatherings, shopping excursions, not to mention things like holiday decorating and Christmas card writing. It's kind of ironic, isn't it, that the escalating time demands that Advent places upon us actually keep us from taking time to focus on the real reason for the season. What would it take for each of us to carve out time this week to just slow down and rest. Time to pretend that the Christ child had been born this day in your particular home, requiring you to simply stay there and keep him warm. Or maybe the problem is that we doubt, that we really don't believe in the manger. The world, especially now in the year 2020, is kind of a violent place. So often victory seems to go to the powers with the largest arsenals and the most ruthless leaders. What chance does a baby in a manger have against suicide bombers, serial killers, machine gun toting terrorists, and corrupt governments? Doesn't seem like a fair fight. And yet, No single life has changed the world more than the life of this Bethlehem baby. A life that challenges people like you and me to look beyond this world and see the kingdom of God. The good news this evening is that there is always going to be room for another baby in the manger. If we will make the trip to Bethlehem in our hearts, we will find the baby there wrapped in swaddling clothes. The baby, he will stay with us on our earthly journey every step of the way and will one day guide us to God's everlasting kingdom, one marked by love and peace and justice. If we will offer this baby love and devotion, we will find true comfort and support for ourselves in return. But let me be clear, there's more to Advent than the pursuit of personal peace. In our preparations for Christmas, we are also challenged to claim Jesus as our own and then tell the world what Emmanuel is up to. That's what the two professors were doing when they traveled to Russia. That's what little Mishka did when he put two babies in the manger. That's what John the Baptist did when he came as a witness to testify to the light of Christ. 
so that all might believe through him in Jesus. It's fascinating to note that John, the gospel writer, or John is never called the Baptist in the gospel story of John. Instead, John, the gospel writer, constantly shifts the focus away from baptism and towards proclamation of Jesus. For John the baptizer, there is only one function in this gospel, to witness to the coming of Jesus Christ. Well, there's a lesson in that story for us this night. Our challenge as Christians is never simply to stay close to Jesus in the manger and enjoy his forgiveness, his acceptance, and his love. We're also called to share with the world out there why we are keeping the baby warm in the first place. When you join Jesus this Christmas Eve, the one who will stay with you forever. Amen. The story of Christmas is the story of a baby. That goes without saying. But it's also the story of a light that comes into the world, a light that darkness cannot overcome. Our third scripture lesson tonight is from the Gospel of John, in the first chapter, verses 1 to 12. If you have your candle, I invite you to light it with me, as together we listen to John's words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that had been made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through the world was made with him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, for of a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. My friends, this is the Word of God for us, the people of God. We are delighted to share with you a second music video tonight. Again, the worldwide virtual choir that comes to us courtesy of the United Methodist General Board of Discipleship. They sing for us Silent Night. The words to this carol are in your bulletin. I hope you will sing with the choir as they share with us this wonderful song of Christmas.
My friends, Jesus is our light. The light that has come into the world and the darkness has not been able, not only not been able to understand it, but has not been able to overcome it. We are people of the light. So may you go forth this night filled with the light of Jesus. And you go forth as people who not only keep the baby in the manger warm, but who literally become the light of Christ to others that you will meet. May you have a Merry Christmas, my friends, and a wonderful New Year. May you go in peace. Amen.